Hi everybody. Again, those who are just um, joining us and those who have been chatting with us for a bit. Um, we are going to take a look at the new stamps that are coming out and I'm going to show you how to recreate this lovely little frame. And I'll show you kind of what you'll need here in a minute um, to finish a lot of three uh, foam squares, I will tell you that. And um, watercolor pencils, things like that. Uh, they are a meal replacement. They're a, a protein. There's enough calories and protein in it. It could be definitely be a meal replacement. I showed them a protein sh shake just a minute ago. So um, how is everybody today? Hopefully good. It's still somewhat early here. Um, sc summer school's over with, so we got to sleep in this morning, which is really nice. Carly's done with all of her summer camps, and now it's kind of just a little veg fest until next month. Aww. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what is coming this summer. So I have five new stamps coming out, and I want to show you a couple of, well, I'm going to show them all. Okay. Oh, it's still early there too, Zoe. <laughs> um, this one is Peyton. She's our little nature girl. She's actually named after my niece, Peyton. Yeah. She's fun. And they all come with little sayings. Um, I don't know where hers is at. I've been messing with these guys, so. And I only have one set, so <laughs> they kind of, like, get a little mixed around a bit. So I made Peyton a little boyfriend. Well, not little, but it's boyfriend. Let me open him up real quick. Okay. We have Sven, and he is actually, he got his name because Peyton's favorite movie when I was making these stamp sets was Take a Guess. Anybody want to guess what her favorite movie was? <laughs> Here is Sven. I'll take the top off so he's not as glared. Okay. When you guys get the stamps, this little saying will be apart from the stamp, just so you know. Yes, Frozen. Um, this is her partner right here. I wanted something a little edgier, so we uh, came out with this little mountain man. Gotta have manly men. Can't have, like, boys. We gotta have manly men. Just like Quentin. He was manly looking. Now we got this guy. Okay, so that's our second stamp. Then we have um, Ginger. She's our little country girl. And her... Um, little saying that will come with her is home is wherever you are. Oh, and Sven's is true strength comes from within. Brawn means, brawn means nothing without heart. So there's that one. And then we have our little Goldie summer stamp. And Aloha will also come apart, um, be apart from the stamp. So cute. And I'll show you a card that a card face that I did using Goldie. So you can kind of see her in action. I did a couple double stamps on her. Use my uh, ray, my circle stencil in the background. Had a little fun with the neon colors. I just thought it would fit her really well. So yep. Those are our little stamps. So fun. Okay. And then we have the bird stamp. And the bird stamp, let me find all of our little pieces. Because again, and I'll show you a couple examples that I, oh well, besides this, I'll show you another example where I use the stamp sets and um, something near and dear that I've been working on. But here is the bird set, and the set comes with quite a few pieces. Comes with our little uh, bird in flight, 
It has uh, three little embellishment pieces, two little flowers, a little cherry or berry stem. We have four birds on this piece. And then we have a um, saying that says, let the wind carry you. Okay. So that is, let me move these other ones out from underneath. Okay. So you get all these pieces in this one set. Okay, so when I design these pieces, I wanted to keep in mind, because many of you probably know, um, I do faith-based journaling, and I wanted something that would fit in the margins of my journal or my Bible, and that is one reason why they're smaller. Two, I wanted something that would be small enough, again, to fit on a card front or still be um, good enough size to where we could use it in our art journals and scrapbook pages and mixed media pieces like this. So it really is that happy medium when you go in to design some of these things. And um, so this is what we'll be making, but I wanted to show you real quick, and I know not all of you will connect with this, but I just wanted to show you how I used it in here find the page there's one so you can see they fit nicely in small spaces but they're still a good enough size to where you um, can use them in the mixed media part of stuff too there's the other one so just another way to use your stamps Okay. Birds freak you out. Oh, thanks. <laughs> That's right, you told me. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this because it is going to take us a bit of uh, coloring and cutting and all of that. Now, he, what we're going to do is you're going to need um, the frame, and the frame I used is actually um, Sandra's, uh, what, the large frame. It's the large one, yeah, the large frame from Sandra's three-piece set. And this is the six by eight frame. We're gonna be using that one. I mean, of course you can use any one, but these are nice. These are nice and fun to use. Okay, now you'll notice this is a natural pine I took some um, wood stain after or before I started. Um, it's I have the air on and everything in here. I'm not going to bring out the wood stain. I'm just going to keep it the natural for today, just because I don't want to pass out on you guys. <laughs> okay, so we're using one of those. You're going to need, of course, the bird stamp set. So make sure you save this video and or save it on uh, YouTube so you can watch it when you get your stamps, yeah? All right, so this, um, you're also going to need some type of like uh, book paper or music sheet paper. I have some old pieces or old books here. Um, I got from my uncle when he passed away, which is kind of neat to uh, use for art. Since he was a musician, mu musician and an awesome artist, sorry, I'm trying to throw the trash away. You'll also need some watercolor paper. Okay, this is my A4 um, paper pad. Nice medium weight uh, watercolor paper. A lot of our stampers like them because you have the texture paper on one side, and then it's got the smooth surface on the back. So. You can use it for stamping or use it for regular watercoloring, which is nice. Which we'll be using the back for today. You'll need some watercolor pencils. Now, I had Primas, but I had a tragic loss. And, well, um, let's just say about a half a gallon of water spilled on my tins, and they were a hot mess before I found them. So I have one set that survived. Yeah, isn't that nice? And not even the whole set survived. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that has been my my luck lately okay and then what we will need also I used uh, the texture white crackle paste 
We're going to be using that on the background. You're going to need some gel medium or matte medium, one of the two. Let me grab that real quick. Alrighty, I'm going to use some matte medium just because it dries a little bit quicker. And that is about it. Oh, and some pins. You're going to want some um, type of pins. I'm using the pit pins, Faber Castell pit pins. We're going to be using those as well. Alrighty. So let's get started. So first off, what you're going to want to do, let's kind of put that aside there, is bust out like one or two pieces of watercolor paper. And my camera, of course, is going to go dark because we have white out. Don't know why it does that. It does not like the color white. I do kind of like stamps and die idea together for sure. Alrighty, so since we're using watercolor paper, you are going to want to use an archival ink because you're going to be using a water based um, medium over the top of them. You don't want a chalk ink or um, some water soluble ink because it'll just react with your um, watercolor pencils later on. So I'm just stamping on the smooth side of my paper. I'm just going to stamp all the pieces that I want to use now so that they're nice, they're stamped and done. I'm using three of the birds. You can use whichever ones you want. I'm not using a brick, as you can see. Okay. Got a little too close on that one, but that's okay. You know, I think I'm going to change this one up. I used this one originally at the top, but I think I'm going to change the scene on this one a little bit. And we're going to use this little chubby bird instead. Little chubby chubby bird. And notice I'm kind of clustering them all close together because, well, I'm not going to be using them on this actual, you know, page as a background. So why waste all that paper? And then I'm going to cut, probably stamp like three or four of the flowers, the big flowers. Clinton's like stomping through the house. Let's go this way. I love how clean the Prima stamps um, stamp. Like the images are really crisp. Okay. <laughs> You show them up close when you are done stamping. Yes, I will. I'm going to do a few of the little, um, actually just like, yeah, a few. Two or three of the little cherries. And I will admit, I'm not the best stamper. It's kind of entertaining that I made a line of stamps because I am so bad at stamping. And let's do this one, the little flower, a couple times. You can always add more later. Okay. One more. All right, so we have our stamped images that we're going to be using. Okay. So 
So I'm all set, ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out and then, or at least frame them out and start coloring. That way they, yes, awesome filler stamp. And that's what I was thinking when I made the flowers and the cherries is I wanted stamps that you can use to fill in like on a scrapbook page. You could stick them in as little stems on a piece or you can make scenes like we are today. Just some little accent that can be put in here and there and that'd be awesome. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and grab some scissors. I need small scissors. And everybody keeps walking away with them all. So not fair. So not cool, man. Not cool. And it's my daughter who steals them, by the way. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to cut them out. Trying not to take too long doing it. Because fussy cutting is like worse than watching paint dry. Let's go ahead and cut them away from the page. makes it a little easier not having all that bulk around you. And when you fussy cut, you want to turn the paper and not your scissors. You want to kind of keep your scissors in the same position. Okay. Now I'm not cutting into each little toe of his feet. I'm going to kind of camouflage that with watercolor pencil later on. Instead of getting all technical on him and stuff, you know? Easy peasy little dude. Let me see if I can lower my camera just a little bit so you guys have a little closer view of him while I'm coloring him. Okay, let's not fall over. That would be really awesome to not lose the camera. Yeah, okay. Cut them all out. That's the tedious part, honestly. This is the one part that takes the most effort. <laughs> okay. And what we'll probably do is I'll get these kind of bulked out. I should have done another sheet. Progress sheet. I didn't even think about it. So sorry been a while. Been a while since I've done Live with Prima. It's like I'm a rookie all over again. So we have them all cut out. Let's go ahead and put those aside. We'll cut them out while our, our background is drying. So let's start a background and then we'll go back to the birds. What you're going to need to do is start with a piece of book paper or music sheet paper. Okay, so we know, let's see, let's just find a random piece. Doesn't need to be fancy. Okay, and let's measure real quick. Eh. It's about a five by seven, I think. Yeah, it's a five by seven. So I'm just going to go off 
mark real quick. It doesn't have to be exact because towards the outside we're going to be covering it with our texture paste. So it's going to cover the borders. We just need to make sure, ah, my screen went dark. We just need to make sure we have it close. So I'm just going to go right about seven inches. Dang it, I'm good when I measure this between my lines. I was five inches. <laughs> Couldn't do that one twice, that's for sure. Again, it doesn't have to be exact because we are going to um, be covering a lot of that. There we go. See? Fits in there. You have a little open space, but that's okay. So we're going to use a little gel, matte medium. I just like to pour that directly into the back. Save myself some time. Make sure you get all the little corners. And then the leftover, I take onto the back of my paper. I pull some of the other excess up. And then I put my paper down and put it on top. Kind of giving a nice even pressure all the way across. That way you get rid of any bubbles that you might have in back there. Don't worry about getting it on the wood. Kind of just seals it a little bit. Okay. Quick and easy, look at that. Alrighty. Give them some water. And then what we're gonna do, it could still be wet, don't worry. I'm gonna take some of this. Oh, it's been humid here too, like um, 80%, 82% humidity last couple days because of our lovely rainstorm. That was not fun, let me just tell you that. Okay, let me find my little palette knife. Where did you go? Dagnabbit. You always figure a way to run off when you need them the most, huh? Okay, we'll use this one. So I'm just gonna take some of this. I'm gonna pull it in from the inside. Kind of just spread it across. And I'm not going to put it in a like uniform way because I want some of that paper kind of showing up in the background. Pull that in. Also, um, some of you that are on the Bloom Girl Creative Group probably saw this um, yesterday. Um, one of our lovely Bloom Girls, um, Kate, uh, Kaylee, KT, um, passed away over the weekend. And I wanted to dedicate this Live with Prima uh, to her. She had started using Bloom Girls when they first came out, and she made some beautiful pieces using them, and I just wanted to recognize her beautiful creativity and her life on today's show. So please, um, yeah, Katie, please just give a little, just a moment of silence for her and kind of just think about her family going through this right now. It's very sad. But 
she left some beautiful work for us to all enjoy. Okay, so let's go and dry some of this so it kind of speeds it up a little bit. Now this is a crackle paste. So it will start um, cracking, crackling here after a bit. Even with the heat gun, which is nice, some crackle paste don't crack if you use the heat gun because you're kind of speeding it up a little too much. Okay. Um, I didn't like the rain because this last weekend, we, in where I'm at, we had over four inches of rain in two days. And unfortunately, my sister and her husband and their one-year-old basically lost um, everything in their house. <laughs> um, anything that was sitting on the floor is gone. She uh, lives on this, I mean, it's, it, it's a suburb, it's a community. And the water was rushing so badly down their street, it washed through their house. And it, it, it came up to the house at least a foot high. And they, when we got in, they had over three inches of sitting water. So, yeah. It was not a good weekend. We went over and... Uh, cleaned every, all that flooring and everything out. Barbara, you can heat it. Um, it's just your crackle won't be quite as um, defined, okay? Um, but this, um, especially with Anna's, you can. You can heat it. It'll crackle. It'll crackle even more on its own later on. Um, ideal if you can just leave it by itself. Um, that's great. If you're in a pinch, you can definitely um, heat it and speed up the process. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I live in San Diego County, so I'm south. Yeah, it was not fun. She, um, the insurance won't cover any of it. So we are trying to just help her out as much as possible. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take a nice soft wash of color. I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of teal if I can get this open. Yeah, if um, with the crackle, if you can, leave it. Um, if not, you could definitely heat it. Uh, it'll dry it, plus it'll sit and crack for a little bit longer. I did say San Diego County. That is where I'm from, born and raised in the same town, okay? So I'm putting a little bit, oh, you know what? You're going to need some gesso. Putting a little bit of the color on there, and then a little bit of gesso. It doesn't have to be heavy or anything, just whatever you have on hand. I'm going to pour some in with there. I do a lot of that. I kind of mix in blend. I probably put a little too much in here, but we'll see. So I'm just going to kind of blend that out, doing a soft wash. I have a little too much paint on here. Now the color I'm using is a lot greener than what is showing on the camera. I'm not being very neat about this. If I thought it through, I would have used um, some masking tape along the sides, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and just paint the inside lip here. Yep. Looks like we'll be doing the outside lip too. And my, yeah, you can see my um, crackle paste was not completely dry, but that's okay. You guys have more time to do this at home on your own. Okay, 
So I'm just going to lightly brush this along the outside now. Kind of rub that in. Again, if you're just checking in the original, I took some uh, just um, blah, 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 furniture stain, wood stain, and stained the frame that way. Now I'm going to take some paper towel. Where did my roll go? And while it's still a little bit wet, I'm going to rub some of that up. Okay, because I want some of that paper to kind of show through a little bit and or crackle. Okay. I'm not pressing too much on the crackle because it's not completely dry. And if I push too much, it's going to lift some of that medium up. But we got some of that in up. I'm going to go ahead and dry it again with my heat gun. Uh, uh, uh. I agree, too many people down here. Uh, Golden's crackle paste is really um, meant to sit overnight. It's, it's a different um, approach with that, with uh, Golden's medium. It is not Prima. It's Deco Art. It's their media, media um, fluid acrylic. It's cobalt teal. For some reason, it's showing up really blue on the camera, but it's a, a teal color. Okay. So I just want it dry enough to where we could work on top of it. Yeah, it's Decor, their media, their mixed media line. Okay, it's dry enough to work on. Okay, so let's put that aside. Now on our piece of paper we have left over, we are going to go ahead and map medium some um, music paper onto so that we can make our branches. And I'll show you, bring back our little um, piece. You can see that um, the backing of our branch is actually white because I um, added it to some watercolor paper to, to give it some stability because music sheet, old, especially old paper, is really thin. Okay, So this is um, what we're going to be doing. I'm going to take a piece of music sheet paper. paper. Now, something this the like the branches I would have picked something a little smaller like the patterns um, smaller but this is what I pulled so this is what we're using this one would probably be good this is old paper let's see when is the print when was this printed I bet you doesn't even tell us let's see it was priced at 75 cents and does not have a date. I'm not a piano player. player. Uh, my uncle, who I ended up getting this from, uh, could play the piano by ear. Isn't that freaking amazing? And he was an art teacher. Beautiful watercolor paintings. Very talented, Mister. So I'm just cutting it down so we're not wasting a bunch of medium trying to secure paper that doesn't need to be there. Okay. All right. So yes, these um. Our Deco Arts media media fluid acrylics are like golden small fluid acrylics. They are like them, okay. And I've used both, and honestly, there hasn't been any um, difference in color or texture between the two. Um, 
me uh, deco arts is of course going to be a little less expensive so if you want an alternative okay so again i'm going to put the media right onto our paper save us a little time bust out my brush Paintbrush still has blue in it. Shoot. Oh well. It's not the end of the world. You know what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to take the medium now onto the back of my paper. Well, that'll help you see where I'm putting it at, I guess. I didn't, I don't think I have enough water in my paint tint, um, tub. Okay. Flip that over. Fit it on as well as possible. It doesn't have to be exact because we're cutting it out anyways. And then putting that on top. Okay, I gotta blend this out better. Gotta do some rinsing. little more mat on top okay and then we're gonna go ahead and dry it got a little too damp but we can Shouldn't take too long. I want to just get it to the point where we can cut it here in a minute. All right, let's put that aside. Let's go back to our little birds. So our little birdies, we are going to use our watercolor pencils on, and you can paint them any color you want. Doesn't matter. Um, you can look at pictures on the online, or just go off from your own imagination. I'm gonna go with a little yellow over here with this guy, and with the watercolor pencils, what I do is I outline the bird with my watercolor pencil. Okay. I don't fill them all the way in. I just outline them. Okay. I'm going to color that black down there. And where is my black? Darn it. Okay, hold on. That is brown. Schmikes. We'll go ahead and use the brown. And you're just going to take a paintbrush or a water brush. Now that's another thing that's gone missing from my um, 
collection of stuff on my desk is my water brush, and I know my daughter has it. So let me find a brush. Probably this one too. Okay, put those aside. Excuse my reach. Okay, so with just a little bit of water, you don't want the brush, you know, saturated. You just want it damp, and then you're going to pull that color inwards towards the center of the stamp. Just kind of moving in a circular motion, loosening that color the pencil oh, my water is not clean hold on it's drinking water it is and I'm just pulling that color around leaving some open spaces here and then down here since it's a little darker I was a little more generous with the color with his little um, wing out here it's going to be the dark brown or again you can use whatever color you want for his beak I'm going to use a little bit of like a brownish yellow color and then blend that out too Okay, it's a very quick and easy way to color. Come on, focus, focus, focus. There we go. Quick and easy. Okay, there we go. Now let's go to this next one. I'm going to do this one, a little blue bird. And again, I'm just going to outline his features. The stomach is going to be kind of brown, so we're going around the edge. And then the wings, we'll add a little blue. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to pull that color out this way. And if I mess up, I can just cut it off before um, once I cut it out. So I'm going to mix the, blend the blue first. Blah, 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 blah. Blend the blue? Yeah, blend the blue first. <laughs> and then I'll come back in and add the brown. Pull that color out towards the edge of the wings. Bring the watercolor pencils. Um, they're a softer pencil um, than than others. I'm going to add a little bit of brown to the stomach. Actually, I'm going to use that yellowish color. I don't want to blend in with the blue too much because it'll just kind of muddy and it won't stay nice and um, fresh and bright. And blend that out. Okay, so we have our second little bird. And our third little guy. 
Let's make him red. I'm gonna make him red. My loud kids, can you hear them? I'm not sure if you guys can ever hear them or not. It's like their voice travels. I'm using two different ones. Um, one set is Prima's. The white um, stem set are Prima's watercolor pencils. And the others are Faber-Castell's. Aquawell, Aquawells, Aquawells. I can never say it right. The blue um, stem are Faber's. Okay. So we have a little red bird. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut them out, finish cutting these guys out. That way I know where I want to place them, and then we'll know what branches to cut, okay? This would be really cute to make because um, Sandra's frame set comes with three frames, so it would be really fun to make a little three-piece set to hang on a wall. Or put on a mantle. Be really fun. Some three little birdie scenes. Okay. And again, we stamped onto my watercolor paper pad, the A4. Nice little mid-grade watercolor paper. It's not too heavy, not too expensive, which is nice. But it still has um, a nice texture to it. Takes color really well. It doesn't warp really badly um, for the weight it is, which is nice. I'm going to add a little bit of brown right around his eye. that one aside. Finish cutting this one out. The frames are by Prima. They're under Sandra Evertson's collection. They come three pieces to a set. Four by six, six or five by eight, I think it is. The outside edge, of course. I don't have it. I just tossed the packaging, so... I'm trying to get this done before... Our hours up. I didn't think it'd take this long. We'll get it finished. Like I said, the tedious part is cutting. We may not get to the flowers of cutting them out, but I mean, you guys know how to cut it out. I'll color them and we'll show you. These bird wings. Holy moly. Holy moly. They take some time. Yes, the relics and artifacts line. Okay. Almost done with his wings. Okay. Is it Friday yet? Sure wish it was. Kind of feels like it should be. Just saying. Just saying. Don't know why. Oh, 
almost done. So what has been your guys' favorite release so far? I mean, I know we still have more to show you, but the sneaks, what are your favorite sneaks so far? We have so many cool things coming out. Cool things, let me tell you. I love Julie's little baby um, stamps. Those are flipping adorable. Adorable. Now these little guys, the little toes, I would suggest cutting these with an X-Acto knife. You can get a little finer detail with a knife than you can with a pair of scissors. Because you're not twisting and turning around um, the paper. Like I am right now. Okay. I'm just going to cut his other foot off. Or we're going to be here for days. Oh, I do. Um, I'm trying to think of what stores we, there are in Oregon. I can't think of any. Oh, look at the little heart we cut out. <laughs> okay. So, let's go ahead, place our birds kind of where we want them, and then we'll figure out how we want to cut the branches. So, these little guys here, we can go up here, and then our little chooky bird's going to sit down here, I think would look good. Okay, so we need a branch here, we need a branch here, and then we'll put one up here. So again, our little measurement is going to be five by seven. So let's go just to keep us in the parameters of the page. You just want it five inches wide. And on the original, you can see, I don't get very technical with the way I draw them or cut them out. I don't even sketch them out first because branches can be rough and bumpy and doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut out a little branch, making sure that I don't go past my five inch mark. Okay. So we have one little branch here. Let's go ahead and use this one for this guy. We'll mess with that in a minute. And then we have, let's cut for this one over here. And we'll cut a little extra limb off of it. Kind of getting a little crazy with it. Seriously, these do not have to look pretty. Okay. So we have our little guy here. Gonna sit on that one. Move that out of the way. And then let's cut another one. And still not going past our little five inch mark. Doing a little couple little branches off of our main piece. Cut down our mark right there. And then just cut a little fork out of this. Okay. We'll 
put that up here and you can add more if you want whatever you like I added a couple that uh, layered back further you can see here where we have um, this main one up here I have a couple that are stacked behind and then I have one that um, this bird is standing on so definitely can add more to it if you'd like but for time wise purposes we're gonna go ahead and go with this so I am this bird's gonna go on top so this one this little branch and what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of brown to the branch real quick just in a couple spots doesn't have to be completely covered I kind of go for the little bends in the branch to add a little contrast and color to it and just blend that out okay. and then with your 3d foam squares we're just going to do one layer on this the back of this so just one little layer of foam oh, I need a little guy where did my little guys go <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be completely stacked on the back we just want it to give it a little lift that guy right there this one's going to stick out of the frame can see there okay. and then this one I'm going to raise up a little higher because we have actually I don't like how this one finished so I'm going to thin it out just a little bit take my pencil just in a couple spots adding some watercolor break up that background just a little bit now this one I'm going to stack um, probably three high to get it lifted up off the back a little bit okay one two Most of our local scrapbook stores sadly are closing. We don't have many left nearby. I mean, we have a lot for the area, but compared to others, but not compared nothing compared to what we had before. So I'm going to put that right against the side there. And then our little dude um we're going to put his kind of leg at I should have check to see where I put the tape huh Dad and have it there we go so his little feet I'm gonna draw his little feet onto the branch once we get him on there so he's gonna be lifted up with three um, foam squares as well three layers Tuck his tail back behind the branch like he's sitting on the branch and then with a little black pen or pencil doesn't matter we're going to draw his little feet back on to his body since they're missing and then this little foot like I said earlier I'm going to just camouflage that in with a little bit of brown <clears throat> and he blends in with the branch okay all right so we have our little chubby bird we're going to add next and then we'll add our blue bird last so again with a little brown here and there nothing too fancy it's another reason why I like this project you don't have to have a lot of supplies I mean in the big picture of things most of it you may be able to scrounge up from whatever you already have okay. 
this one we're going to give two layers of foam. So we have one with one, one with three, and one with two. Just creates some different dimension and depth to the piece. Okay. Let's put this one down here. And this one's going to kind of overlap our other branch. And kind of pull it up like this to kind of create a little difference. See that? Cool, cool, cool. Does anybody have questions? I know it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward little project here we got going on. So we're gonna put our little chubby bird on there. Let's see. We are going to put this branch behind him. Move them over just a tad. And our little bluebird. And he's the one that really gets stacked with the um, <clears throat> foam squares. I'll probably do like four or five on the back of him. Because he's really the main focus of our piece. So I have four, let's see. Uh, let's do one more. Oh, my ears keep popping, they're stuffing up. Okay. All right, so we're gonna put this little guy there. Okay. Look, it's so pretty. I tip them a little bit more this way. All right, so now let's go ahead. We'll do a couple little of the bows or the flowers, I mean. Okay. A couple of the flowers. And to color the flowers, what I did was I took my pit pens and I went ahead and took a couple colors and blended them together. So I start out with my light color, just color those in. And again, if you color before you cut out, um, it doesn't matter if you go outside the lines because you can cut out your mistake. <laughs> So I put my lighter color on first, then I'm going to come in and just add a darker color along the edges of my petals, color in these back pieces, kind of, come on, there we go, you can see how I just add a little shading to the edge. Then we're gonna cut this out. I don't keep the whole stem. I'm just gonna keep part of the stem. And I use these as fillers. So what you're gonna do is you are going to go ahead and Place them like at the edge of the branches, under the birds, behind the birds. Ah, my scissors aren't sharp enough for this. And you can see here how I kind of stuck them at the end of little branches. We can put one up here, we can put one down here, which I think I'm going to do. I'll show you how I go about making the little petals or not petals, the leaves. Okay. What is the color marker you used? The colors I used were 
Scarlet Red 118 and Pale Geranium Lake 121. Those are the two colors. The main, the body was the um, Scarlet Red and then the outline, the shading was done with the Pale Geranium Lake. Okay, so for the petals, what I do is I go ahead and I just cut out a little almond shaped piece. I actually cut the original out of pattern paper, had like a green tint um, pattern to it. So I just um, colored it that way. If you don't have any pattern, you can go ahead and just add a little bit of color to the background, like so. Oop. Blend that out just a little bit. Make sure it's dry before you add your pit pins or what will happen is the pit pin will run a little bit. So I just made a vein down the center and then offshoots towards the outside. Okay. Like so. There we go. Simple, simple. And then what I do is I kind of take my nail and I kind of crease that center part just a little bit to give it a little dimension there. And then I'm going to go ahead and take one of my little, actually I'm going to take a little adhesive. Oh, come on. There it is. And place it over the top of the edge of my flower to kind of hide the stem. You see that? You see, see? Okay. Now, what I would do is I would fill the entire piece up with these flowers and the berries. You could see here, you could spend, you know, hours cutting out and coloring the, um, come on, why aren't you focusing? There we go. You could see you could spend, you know, the afternoon cutting out and um, adding those. Now I'll color in what I did with the, the berries. Took the same colors. Actually, I'll take the darker color. I'm going to go and I'm going to color the entire piece in, but I'm going to leave just a little spot open right around the stem. So it's a little catch of light. All right, so it's like the reflection of a cherry. So we're just going to color, leaving one little spot open. And do that for all three. There you go. Yep. Um, what, uh, does anybody have any questions? Before we kind of wrap things up, again, we don't have enough time for me to add all of the flowers, but I wanted to give you the steps and um, techniques that I used. For the banner at the bottom, I stamped our little uh, word, our um, word stamp. Where did it go? This little guy. I just stamped it on a piece of uh, blank paper. A blank, see there's the blank spots on our music sheets. I just stamped it down on that and then added it to the bottom of our page. That's my actual handwriting too. <laughs> Wanted to give you guys a little piece of me in it. Okay. And um, with the watercolors, again, if you're using the watercolors, you want to make sure you're using a permanent ink pad. You don't want to use a chalk ink or a water soluble ink because what will happen is uh, the watercolors, when you're working with the water, will end up um, reactivating your ink 
um, your stamp and you don't want that because it'll turn muddy and blurry and it just does not turn out nice and crisp and pretty so you keep that in mind I kind of like the two looks this is more like a darker piece this is nice and springy and light um, even when I add more of the flowers it's going to be you know brighter and um, just a little more uplifting I guess you could say it okay thank you so much thank you Carrie for having me um, for a little guest spot on live with Prima this month uh, thank you for taking a look at the new stamps that we have coming out and make sure to ask your stores if they don't already carry the bloom collection make sure you ask them to carry them um, it's really going to be um, kind of nice to have these uh, out in the market here soon okay thank you everybody thank you for coming um, announcements for our next show make sure you come Adrian's going to be making some um, let me grab that real quick sorry Adrian is going to be up Thursday and she'll be creating a layout using the new garden fable line that's a really pretty line too so make sure and Adrian's pages are always just mind-blowing it's just I love it um, yeah go ahead and please um, you can PM me um, on Facebook whenever you guys need to okay Deb usually does scrapbooking forever scrapbook forever does usually carry the bloom collection I would check in with her and just ask her alrighty um, also the special delivery July kit is um, up on livewithprima.net um, so you can order them now so go ahead and take a look at those as well all right um, yes uh, Adrian's is 630 Pacific Standard Time on Thursday night all right thank you everybody thank you for coming um, I hope you have a great summer winter fall wherever you guys are at and have a nice uh, day and I'll see you guys later all right bye